Hey there, my name is Mac, and I'm here today to talk to you about a lithium battery conversion I recently did on a boat. Okay, first a little background on me. I have a degree in electrical engineering, and I am also an ABYC certified master technician. I also own and operate a marine service business where I specialize in electrical work. I'm here today to talk to you about lithium batteries because it's the most recent big technology shift in the boat world, and there's a lot of discussion on the internet about it. There are pros and cons to going lithium, and in this video, I'll cover a real-world example of a boat that made the decision to go lithium, and I'll talk about why they did it, the design phase, and the different options there were, and then I'll go into detail about how the installation was made. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first off, I'll introduce the boat. It is a 40-foot, 2018 Beneteau sailboat hailing from Anacortes, Washington. The customers have a lot of experience cruising in the local waters of the San Juan Islands, as well as a big trip to Southeast Alaska. They enjoy being in remote anchorages, and after their trip to Southeast Alaska, they found that their 12-volt, 240-amp-hour AGM house bank was just not keeping up with their power demands. Moreover, they added Starlink, which is an additional load, stressing the system even more. So they were complaining basically of running out of power after one day at anchor. Because of this, they decided to upgrade their electrical system to accommodate a lithium house bank. Now, right out of the gate, lithium has a clear advantage in that batteries have double the energy density of a lead acid or AGM style batteries. That's due to the fact that you can run lithium batteries down to like 0% charge, whereas you can only really run AGM or lead acid down to 50% without causing uh, damage to them. And the customer didn't want any large-scale carpentry projects, so simply adding more AGM batteries was not an option. So because of these reasons, um, they selected to use three 12-volt, 75-amp-hour lithium batteries from Battleborn um, to replace those three Group 24 deep cycle AGMs. What's really nice about Battleborn is that they have the same footprint of the existing house batteries, so they dropped right into place without having to make any modifications. So with the batteries selected, we now kind of began building out the rest of the system. Here's a map of their existing system. So you can see here they have three AGM battery banks, a starter battery, a battery for the bow thruster slash windlass, and a house battery bank consisting of three Group 24 12-volt 80-amp-hour AGM batteries. To charge the banks while using the engine, a, an internally regulated 100-amp alternator goes straight to a Christec MOSFET battery isolator which allows each of the three banks to take a charge from a single point on the isolator. To charge the batteries while on shore power, the boat has a single Christec 40 amp three output charger with outputs uh, going individually to each battery bank. So the first thing we need to address is the fact that the existing alternator is internally regulated, which means there's no intelligence built into it. This is a fine setup for boats with lead acid or AGM style banks. However, lithium batteries have the ability to recharge so fast that adding a bank to an internally regulated alternator will essentially work it to death. The alternator will overheat trying to keep up with the lithium's demand. So to solve this issue, an external voltage regulator is added. This device monitors battery temperature and more importantly, uh, alternator temperature and has the ability to decrease the alternator's output when it sees it heating up. You know, once the alternator cools enough, the regulator steps back up the output. This is a really effective way to keep the charging system in balance, but it also maximizes the output of the alternator. So for external regulation, we added a Balmar MC618 as well as an alternator modification kit, which allowed the existing alternator to be externally regulated. Okay, so we've got the alternator portion sorted out. We'll move on to the next phase, uh, which is a major design decision needs to be made and that is, where do we plumb the alternator to? We have several options here, one being we can direct the alternator's output to the starter battery, and then a DC to DC charger to charge the lithium bank from the starter. This has the distinct advantage that the alternator will never see an open circuit caused by the lithium battery's BMS opening up. Uh, this situation can fry the diodes in the alternator, rendering it useless, so not a good situation to be in. AGM batteries don't have the ability to open up like a lithium battery, so you don't have to worry about this situation. Um, so with this setup, the alternator charges the starter battery, and in turn, the DC to DC charger dumps power into the lithium bank. This is a really common practice in the field and is considered very safe. However, the customer was very keen on recharging the lithium bank as fast as possible, and this design leaves some efficiency on the table with the DC to DC charger being in between the alternator and the lithium bank. 
The other design option here and the one the customer ultimately went with was plumbing the alternator directly to the lithium bank. Now the alternator and external regulator work in sync to dump as much power as possible into the lithium bank while keeping the system balanced through its monitoring. Now that leaves the question, how are the other AGM banks going to be charged while this engine is running? So to address this problem, a DC to DC charger is used to charge those banks. Um, basically power is tapped off the lithium bank and sent to the existing Crystec battery isolator where it's distributed to the two other AGM banks. Now, the trick with this is that we only want the DC to DC charger operating while the engine is running. You don't want the starter bank to be sapping precious house bank power while at anchor. So to achieve this, I used a 12 volt relay that is activated when the ignition circuit on the engine is activated. Um, that relay triggers the DC to DC charger to start working and continue working until there's no longer voltage on that circuit, meaning the engine is off. Okay, so now we've got the major pieces in place. We are maximizing the output of the alternator and all the banks are being charged while underway. Now we need to address the shore power charging aspect. After discussing options with the customer, we came up with a plan to use the existing 40 amp shore power battery charger to solely charge the lithium bank. Uh, the charger has a lithium profile, so it can easily be repurposed for that. Uh, to charge the AGM banks, an additional 15 amp multi-output shore power charger was added with separate outputs going to each of the existing AGM banks. Power for the new AGM charger is pulled from the existing battery charger breaker on the boat's distribution panel, so there's no change in operation when tied to shore power. Okay, so that's the overview of this project. I completed this install earlier this summer and the boat has been out cruising and I'm happy to report that the owners are thrilled with the results. So they reported back to me that while underway, they are putting about 80 amp hours each hour into the lithium bank while also charging the other two banks and also getting to spend more time at anchor. Now, this is a pretty high level look at this project and I hope you found it helpful. I would definitely caution the do-it-yourselfers out there who are thinking about installing one of these systems on your boat. Um, it's critical that the system is configured and wired properly to keep everything safe. Lithium batteries have an amazing amount of power in them and the installation of a new system like this needs to be very carefully done. Uh, moreover, many insurance companies will not insure a vessel with lithium batteries on them unless they've been installed by an ABYC certified technician. Also, before I go, um, I just wanna say that I'm a firm believer in lithium. I've cruised approximately 5,000 miles and been several years off grid uh, with my lithium setup and I wouldn't have any other way. The ability to deeply discharge them and to recharge them so fast just makes life so much easier um, off grid. So I definitely recommend it for, for cruisers out there. Please let me know if you have any questions on this system or if you're looking to have a lithium battery system put in your boat. If you're near Anacortes, Washington, I may be able to help. So thank you for watching. If you're interested in more cruising lifestyle videos, we've got a bunch of those on our channel. And we also have a website at cruisingmaya.com. Uh, there we've got some fun merchandise and other ways you can help uh, support us. So um, thank you very much. And we hope to see you here next time. Cheers. Okay, so not quite done yet. Um, I just got done editing this video and I wanted to make some comments. Um, one of those comments is I want to address my electrical drawings. Now, after editing this video, I noticed that the fuses on the diagrams are probably going to lead to some confusion. In retrospect, I should have just left the fuses off the diagrams entirely, um, as this video is really looking at a system from a super high level. So um, you might say, well, why didn't you just go back and change the diagrams? Well, the schematics, I made all of them in Microsoft Paint, and it took a long time. So I'm just addressing it right now. On the customer's boat, I did have each lithium battery separately fused along with a master fuse. And there were a bunch of other fuses in various locations. My diagrams would just be way too crowded if I needed to include all those fuses. So just know that they're there even though they aren't represented in the diagrams. On one last note, while I'm confident that this customer's lithium battery BMS isn't gonna open up unexpectedly, I did put in a dump protection device, which is a little box that steps in and protects the alternator should the BMS open up while charging. This device will alarm if it does go off, which will alert the captain of the issue. I've got the same setup on my boat, 
And I've cruised for years without the BMS unexpectedly opening, but it is a good idea to have a backup plan. Okay, so I think that covers it. Again, I think lithium is a really great tool for people who are looking to get more out of their boat's battery bank. And when it comes to installing them, there is more than one way to do it. It all depends on you and your boat's needs. If you're considering building a system of your own, check out my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Uh, these are all products that I use and recommend. And by purchasing through these links, I get a small commission at no extra charge to you. Okay, so that's officially it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. And thank you for watching. We hope to see you here next time. Cheers.